All right, guys, so I'm going to be doing problem 42 from homework one uh, for my week two explainer video. Uh, so the problem part A says the 70 kilogram student in the figure below balances a 1200 kilogram elephant on a hydro hydraulic lift. What is the diameter of the piston that the student is standing on? Okay, so I started out strategy wise how I always start problems. Uh, I wrote specifically what I want. Uh, in this case, the problem is asking for the diameter of the piston that the student's standing on. Uh, I'm going to use the symbol D subscript S for that. Uh, and now I'm going to write what we know. Uh, so I drew a picture uh, because we know the layout of the situation that's given in the problem. Uh, I just simplified the picture a bit. I made the elephant and the person a box uh, with the mass labeled. Uh, I took out all the numbers as well so we could solve the symbols uh, just so it's more clear what I'm actually doing while I'm solving. Uh, and also in this figure I drew, it's important to note that uh, both platforms in this case are at the same height. That's what the dotted line represents. Uh, so what we know, we're given the mass of the elephant, the diameter of the elephant, and the mass of the student. And we want, the again, the diameter of the student. So we're trying to write the diameter of the student in terms of everything that we know already. Uh, so to start off, um, personally, one big pitfall uh, that I think maybe not a lot of people, but I certainly have had uh, that you should be careful not to make. Uh, whenever I have problems like this on uh, past engineering tests, I always assume that the problem is a lot more complicated than it actually is. Uh, specifically, I assume that because this diameter is less than this, uh, there's going to be some complicated change in pressure. Uh, but in reality, thanks to Pascal's law, uh, we know that the pressure is actually going to be the same at both uh, here and here uh, because they're at the same height. So the pressure is the same everywhere, uh, which allows us to make the statement uh, the pressure at the student is equal to the pressure at the elephant platform. Uh, so yeah, again, uh, make sure you don't uh, freak out and get intimidated by the, pro by the problem. Uh, just remember Pascal's law uh, and the problem becomes a lot simpler and easier to solve. Uh, so going from there, uh, we need to break the problem down further. Uh, so we know pressure is equal to force over area. So we can uh, say that if the pressure of the student is equal to the pressure of the elephant, we can say that the force of the student over the area of the student is equal to the force of the elephant over the area of the elephant's platform. Uh, we still don't have DS in here, which is what we want. So let's break it down further. Uh, we know force is equal to MA. Uh, in this case, the force is the weight force uh, of these masses pulling down due to gravity, so weight is equal to mg. Uh, so we can replace f with mg, and we can replace a with the formula for area, which is pi d squared over 4. And then going forward, uh, so we, again, we break this down into this using the steps I just explained. And then we just have to solve for ds. So we now have an equation here that has ds in it, which is good. That's what we want. Uh, so now we just have to isolate it. I'm going to skip a bunch of algebra but I promise when you solve for ds, this is what you get. Uh, and we know this is an answer because it's what we want written only in terms of things that we already know. So these are all known values right here. Uh, and if you plug everything in, you should get 0.48 as the answer. Uh, so now we're gonna do part B. Uh, so part B states that when a second student joins the first, the piston should sink, uh, will sink 35 centimeters. Uh, what, using that, find the second student's mass. Uh, so I drew the new picture of the new scenario. So we have another mass on the student piston, uh, which sinks the platform 35 centimeters. So it's important to note that they're not now not at the same height. This is 35 centimeters lower than this one. Uh, so going step by step. Uh, so contextually, the goal of this problem as a whole, both A and B, is to get you to understand Pascal's law. Uh, so in part A, Pascal's law applied perfectly. Uh, so we were able to set the pressure at the student's platform equal to the pressure at the elephant's platform. Uh, but in this case, since they're at a different height, we have to modify Pascal's law a bit. So we can still use Pascal's law, uh, but we have to uh, make some changes to it in order to get an answer for this since they're at different heights. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, instead of pressure at the student being equal to pressure at the elephant, uh, pressure at the student is now equal to pressure at the elephant minus the change in pressure that occurs from here to here. So that's the key point here, really. Uh, so again, to reiterate, the pressure at the student is now equal to this pressure up here minus the change in pressure that occurs here. So that uh, makes intuitive sense 
to get to here, you would have to start from up here and then subtract whatever the difference in pressure is uh, in this area uh, because pressure increases as you get lower. Uh, so this is our basic equation. Uh, to break this down further, we know change in pressure is equal to rho GH, rho being the density of the fluid. Uh, we can break it down just like last part. F over A is equal to F over A, but now we have minus rho GH. And to break down, that down further again, again, we break down F. Uh, in this case, uh, the masses part is a little bit different because as you see in the figure above, we have two masses. Uh, so it's actually the total mass. So it's the mass of the second student plus the mass of the first student. Uh, if I didn't mention it already, I'm using the variable uh, MS2 for the mass of the second student. Uh, so this is, would be the total mass times gravity over the area formula. Uh, and then in this case, we just have the mass of the elephant minus rho GH. And then again, we just now since we have uh, what we want, uh, we can isolate for that. So we have what we want over here. Isolated is equal to all of this. Uh, and we know this is an answer because these are all known values. Every, every variable in here is a known value. And if you plug everything in, you should get 58 kilograms. And that's it.